When we think of Fiat, we tend to think of small, buzzy, little Italian city cars and super midis, such as the Panda, the Uno, the Fiat 500, the Cinquecento, and so forth. But they've always been pretty adept at making some commercial vehicles over the years. In fact, in 1923, they built their first one. Well, here they are nearly 100 years later, and they've gone electric. And they've gone electric with this, their Ducato. So, welcome to another van review. Welcome to the Fiat e Ducato. And as always, ciao to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we go into this week's review of the new Fiat e Ducato, it is of course that time where I ask you to make sure you subscribe to the Auto EV channel and press the little bell button down below so you're notified when our next video goes live. And if you like what we do, make sure you give the videos a bit of a like as well and leave some comments for us. Now, the Fiat Ducato. It's been on the go since 1981 and it's always been a sort of like a technical partner van. In other words, it shared a lot of its design and platform with some rivals. Even now, Fiat is part of Stellantis Group, which does include Peugeot, Citroen and Vauxhall. Even previous to that, it shared a lot with those vans, the Peugeot Boxer, the Citroen Relay and the Vauxhall Movano. You can have the e Ducato in three different heights and three different lengths of van, chassis cabs and minibuses. But is it any good? Well, there's a lot of stiff competition out there, especially now in the new van market with ele electric mobility becoming the new buzzword. But let's put it through an Auto EV van review and find out. Now, styling wise, I think this happens to be a pretty decent looking van. Now, I said it was the new generation, but it's not. Let me explain that. There is a new Ducato available, but it's only available with the internal combustion engine. If you want EV power, then you have to stick with this previous generation one. There are some differences. On the outside, it, this previous one has the old style Fiat badge. The new one gets the new kind of big Fiat badge. And there's a much different interior, but we'll get onto that later. But as I say, if it's electric power you want for your Ducato, this is the one you're going to have to have until the new generation becomes available with the battery and the electric motors. All make sense? Good. Right, let's get back onto styling, because I say, I happen to think it's quite a decent looking van. Nice big high set headlamps here. This sort of continuous line all the way up to the windscreen, up to the roof, aged with aerodynamics. Fiat stylists say this kind of front design is meant to ape a Centurion's helmet, a Roman Centurion's helmet. I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, the only thing I will say in terms of what's different to the, the, the Ducato in terms of something like the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, you don't get the kind of handy step and built into the bumper that you do with the Mercedes to allow you to sort of like get up to clean your windscreen or service your wiper blades, which is a, quite a handy thing in the Mercedes and it would be handy here given the actual physicality of the Ducato. But other than that, I quite like it. I especially like it in this kind of matte kind of grey finish. It's quite nice. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can have the Ducato in a variety of different sizes. The one that we have here is the medium wheelbase and high roof version, but there are three different lengths, three different heights available in terms of the panel van. What do we have down the side? Well, you know, you've got some nice kind of decent size, big kind of door mirrors with a little blind spot, um, the concave mirror there, which is okay, but no blind spot monitoring on the van, which is I think a little bit of an omission in my view. There you get some nice kind of cladding down the bottom just at the right height to save your panels. The doors open up to give you good access into the cabin with a nice easy kind of step up there and handle there. Your charging flap however is here and I have to say it's probably the worst place to put it because I have been charging the van up. I've had to park sideways on to the chargers taking up other charging bays and that's not good. That's a really bad um, design flow, I think. It should either be at the back or it should be at the front like the Sprinter is, so you can actually pull into the bay or reverse into the bay to get it to the charger quite easily. Now, you just get the one sliding door on this one, which is obviously on the near side here, but it does open up quite wide, and we'll go on to measurements in a minute. Um, but that's quite good, nice big sliding door there. And then further down the back, um, you see you get this nice big carry on plastic bumper at the back. Wheel trims on this one, this is the E-Technica trim level here that we've got, so you get the, the steel wheels with the wheel covers on as well, and I see I happen to particularly like that paint. But let's check out the back of it. And at the back, well, it's neat and unfussy, isn't it? You know, your nice big kind of squared off rear end, big tall tail lamps at the side that allow the doors to open up uh, quite wide. Nice low set bumper as well, reversing sensors on this particular model. There is a reverse camera as well, which is right at the top there 
under that high level brake light and it's not a brilliant image it gives in the front it might have been slightly better maybe to put it on this side under the number plate because I say it's a bit it's awkward to use when you see the actual image that it portrays and um, other than that you've just got your big Ducato badge here and your Fiat Professional badge there as I say it's quite neat I happen to think it's a good looking van but it's not without its flaws as we'll see now the Ducato has excellent practicality credentials these big doors open all the way around to 270 degrees which means obviously you're going to get yourself backed up to any load bay that you could really wish for low load height here just at knee level for me gives us nice access into the rear now that's 11.5 cubic meters in this particular van but it will go up to over 17 cubic meters on the long wheelbase high roof van as well in terms of load bay dimensions what are you looking at well we've got a total load width of 1562 millimeters with the height being 1790 millimeters obviously that increases as you go inside the van now inside the van's width is 1870 millimeters between the sides and that drops to 1422 millimeters between these wheel arches the load bay length in this one is 3120 millimeters from the side door your maximum loading width is 1250 millimeters and the maximum entry height is 1755 millimeters now where the Ducato really shines against something like Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is it's in its payload capacity this particular van we have is fitted with a 47 kilowatt hour battery and that has a maximum payload carrying capacity of 1135 kilos if you option it with the bigger 79 kilowatt hour battery it can still lug 820 kilos and that is more than the mercedes-benz e sprinter that we tested the other week now any advantages that the ducato has had up until now slips away the moment you step inside the cabin this is very poor as far as I'm concerned up here this is not a particularly nice place to be let's start first of all with the driving position which reminds me of an old Ferrari um, which is to say you've got to have short legs but long arms typical Italian driving position unfortunately that's the only thing that reminds me of an old Ferrari with this van the wheel itself will only actually adjust for reach it doesn't adjust for rake so you can't adjust it for rake and it always feels like it's too far away like the top edge of it is just it's more bus like than van like you know it's that short leg long arm driving position that i say it just it never feels right and then when you move it the whole shroud just rattles and moves around with it it doesn't in instill you with any confidence of any good build quality and while we're on build quality the mismatch of plastics in here is just woeful this top edge here of this screen just feels bad there's exposed screw heads all over the place this weird kind of cheap silver plastic that's gone around the air vents feels just well cheap and incongruous the transmission lever which obviously is is this position next to this when you move it this side of the dashboard moves when you move this it just moves with it it's it just feels like it's all not put together well enough there's some reasonable storage you've got two big cup holders there you've got big double height door bins which is good because the lower one you can't reach um, unless you're actually outside the van it's way too long unless you've got arms like an ape um, but the higher one's okay but then there's this door handle here which is you put your hand all the way through why is that not meeting the top of the door there to give another little tray you could put sunglasses in and then there's this different color plastic shroud here which just feels cheap and nasty there's no storage up here up on the top so what you're left with is down here um there's a a sort of flip up top lid there for bits and pieces you can have it with a tablet holder up there but this particular van's just got an open um tray there and um, there's another open tray there glove box well that'll only just take the actual handbooks for the van itself that's as big as that goes ah uh, it's, it's not good there's a 12 volt charge socket there and a usb port there but again they feel like a bit of an afterthought and that's when you really start to realize what this is the electric Ducato the e-Ducato 
feels like an afterthought because this here is the screen that controls all your sort of like electric gubbins so your range your charging select times you know if you want to select what time the van starts charging up and counts off and it'll tell you about your power flow meter but it just it's stuck on to the a pillar and there's exposed wire at the back of it and as i say it feels like a real afterthought you do get standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but again, the infotainment screen, it's old fashioned, it's clunky, it's ill, it doesn't respond particularly well. The graphics are way last generation. And it's the same with things like the automatic climate control and the graphics you get on the dashboard. They're from the old Fiat Punto and it, you can really tell. And it just, it, it just all just doesn't really work, especially when you get to the price, which we'll get on to later. But the worst thing about it is this. It starts with a key. When you start it, it keeps bonging. There's more bongs in here than there is in an art student's accommodation. It's ridiculous. It only stops when you put the seatbelt on. It's just, in, it, it's incredibly annoying and just horrible as far as I'm concerned. The seats, as I say, they're not particularly comfortable. I feel like I'm sort of sliding out of it. No matter how I adjust it, I feel like it's always like facing down and I'm about to slip out. I do have an adjustable armrest here, and obviously you've got this high thing, the door uh, bin here, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a very uncomfortable driving position. You've got this double bench seat with this kind of cloth uh, trim on this E-Technica uh, model that we have here but it doesn't do anything it doesn't flip up there's no storage in it there is a fold down sort of like table here but again it just feels a bit cheap and nasty and you can't really fit anything in there and it's not easy to write the new Ducato the new generation one that's coming out has like the smaller vans where this is much more you can swivel it it's got different um, permutations but you can't have that with an electric power at the moment. So if you want an EV Ducato, this is what you're faced with. And I'm sorry, it just isn't good enough. This is woeful in terms of an interior. Now, as I say, you can have the e Ducato with two battery sizes, either a 47 kilowatt hour battery like we have here, or a larger 79 kilowatt hour battery. Respective WLTP range figures for those are 147 miles and 219 miles respectively take those figures with a massive pinch of salt because Fiat have been quite clever. They tend to quote those figures when it's more to do with urban city driving rather than open road driving. You start putting a weight in this van, any load behind it and get it up onto motorways and those figures will plummet. Charging, you do from here. Now this is, as I say, a really silly place to put a charging port, in my opinion, on a long van because most of the chargers which are tethered, you can't get it round to here from, you know, at the petrol stations, the Shell Recharge or the BP Pulse um, chargers won't reach there, which means you have to park side on, which is not ideal at all. In fact, I took up three bays with this van trying to charge at Shell petrol station this morning. Thankfully, no one else was around trying to charge at the time. It will take up to 50 minutes to put an 80% charge in this smaller battery um, van. If you want to put the same charge, 80% in the larger battery van, it's 1 hour and 25 minutes. Charging up full is going to be just over 8 hours for the smaller battery and certainly a lot longer for the larger battery. Now this is a bit unconventional because normally obviously I've got my camera rig set up to do slightly more professional than this but I'm just going to just quick vlog here because this Ducato has caused me some quite serious problems when it comes to charging this is the second charger that I've been at the local Shell Recharge uh, charger and the reason I've had to come to another one I thought the first one the BP Pulse one that I tried wasn't working and I spent a long time on the phone to them and of course it's a pre-authorization so I kept trying it and by the time I'd done all that it, I was probably down to about 50 odd quid and I thought I can't understand what this charger is and charging the van so I phoned BP Pulse and the very nice man reset the machine and we still couldn't get it to work and I couldn't quite understand it. So I couldn't wait any longer so I came to this one and I couldn't get this one to work either and I kind of thought why is this not working? The only way I can get this van to charge is by locking it which means I can't sit inside it while it's charging. Now that's fine today because obviously it's a nice day albeit I am stood outside at a petrol station. Thankfully there is a, a coffee emporium um, here which means I can have a coffee. 
but that's poor. I mean, I can't understand. It's the only way I can get this van to actually take a charge is by locking it. So that means I can't sit inside it. If today had been wet, I don't think I'd be that happy. Excuse the noise, because obviously there's some, I'm obviously at a petrol station, there's some road works going on, and we're also above, um, the, the planes from Heathrow are going above us as well. The other problem I have is this, where the charging port is. Which means I've got to park side onto the charger. I'm taking up two bays. This is a poor, poor example, I think. I have to say, if I was using this van for business, I have probably wasted about 40 to 45 minutes just trying to get to a charger to get it work, only to find out that it's actually the van's fault, not the charger's fault, that's the problem. Not good for it, not good at all. So how does the e Ducata feel to drive? Um, not great, if I'm being honest. It produces 122 brake horsepower through a single motor mounted up at the front, driving the front wheels. And it, to all intents and purposes, it feels like some of those nags have wandered off to graze someone else. It's a... One thing I've noticed with the van is there's a, a real inconsistency with the controls. So the throttle pedal needs a reasonable stamp on it to make anything work. But the brake pedal, well, as soon as you touch that, it stops. So there's just no consistency between the weighting of the pedals. And it's really, it takes a little while to be able to drive it smoothly. And even then, it's not particularly nice to drive. Let me start with the first problem, apart from that inconsistency of controls. It's the driving position again. I, I feel like I'm sort of like forward. I feel like I'm just gonna slide out the seat. No matter how I adjust it, I feel like I'm always sliding forward out of the seat. Couple that with this steering wheel, which is more like an old route master. And it's just an uncomfortable, an uncomfortable van to drive. You just can't seem to sit in a nice place where it feels, you know, where you're in control of it. Which then causes a problem when you come across something that's called a corner. Because even despite the weight of the batteries being as low down in, in the van as they are, it feels like it really pitches into the corner and you feel like you're just sliding out of the seat. Worse, it feels at times that the van might just end up on its side. I mean, that's being, I'm over-exaggerating there, but you generally have a huge amount of roll in it. And as I say, you, you tend to find yourself moving around in the seat quite a lot, and it, it makes for very disconcerting times, I think. So that's the first problem. The second issue I have with it is the, the sort of like the refinement of it. It's noisy in here. There's a huge amount of suspension noise from the van. Now, it's got leaf springs at the back. Now, that's okay in terms of capacity for the load bay, because it keeps the intrusion to a minimum, but it makes the ride quality abysmal. And it feels like the front end is doing something completely different to the back end. I'm sure this camera will be shaking like Billio at the moment, even with its stabilisation on, because the ride quality on this road surface is so poor. Every last crack on the surface, expansion joint, change of camber, drain hole cover, everything is picked up and it is just amplified through the whole structure. It's not a refined van at all. I mean, I get they're sort of like workmanlike, but there's no need for it to be as bad as this. And that amplifies yet another issue that I said earlier with the build quality of the van. It's poor, so therefore it rattles. You've got creaks and groans from plastics that mismatch each other, that just don't feel well screwed together. It just doesn't, it, it's not nice. It feels like, as I say, the van's done 200,000 miles rather than 2,000 miles that this van has done. That's the other thing. The safety systems, and okay, it's got safety systems, but you wander anywhere near a white line, and it does that. And I was nowhere near it. It's the lane keep assist is so intrusive 
that's what happens as soon as you anywhere near a white line you get that beeping noise all the time as I say the beeps and bongs from this thing is ridiculous it's 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 a really poor I'll tell you what it's like I'll tell you the best way I can summarize this van up it feels like someone has taken a diesel engine Ducato and done an EV conversion on it and not done it well that's how it feels it's poorly executed there are three different driving modes with it not that you'll want to really experience them that much and they're on this button here which is kind of hidden behind this odd transmission lever because that's obviously where the manual gear stick would be on the manual van and it's got this weird gate where you have to put it through certain things to get it to drive or reverse the drive mode button is hidden behind that and then you press that and you can go from either eco which is awful because nothing feels like nothing works when you push the pedal to power to normal and there doesn't seem like a massive difference between normal and power at all um, the brakes, well, let's talk about them because, as I say, when you use the pedal, they're really sharp um, and they take a lot of getting used to. There is one level of regeneration on it, um, and that's controlled via this transmission lever. So when you're in the in D um, for drive, if you flick it across the left and it'll spring back, that puts the brake regeneration on. You get a little symbol up here saying it's on, um, and then that gives you this uh, brake regeneration. So it's a bit like having the B button that you get on some of the Stellantis Group cars. Um, do the, the same, push it to the left again, let it spring back, that takes it off with the van will then coast. And that's okay, that's absolutely fine. That does that does enough, I think. You know, you wouldn't, it'd be nice to see more levels of regeneration, but it has it, so we shouldn't complain too much. And I feel like I want to give the van a little bit of a break, if I'm honest with you. I've been criticising it so much, but I, I, I really do mean it. I, I'm so disappointed with, oh God, this brakes. I'm so disappointed with how this drives. It is really, really, it's not good. It's not good at all. I mean, I can't really convey in a pleasant way to the point I genuinely thought something was wrong with the van and I took it for a drive the other day. I took it for a really long drive, but nah, it never got any better. This, this, this isn't good. This isn't a good van. Sorry. Now, if you think the flip side to all this negativity is, well, it's going to be a cheap van, be prepared to be shocked, because it isn't. The e Ducato starts at £51,500 plus VAT after the plug-in vehicle grant, which is available at time of filming, is taken into account. This van that we have here on test is over £56,000 plus VAT after the grant, but it's not impossible to spend over £70,000 plus VAT, including that grant, after few options are taken into account, which is frankly ridiculous. If there is a saving grace in this is that Fiat do offer the van with a five-year 100,000 mile warranty on it and servicing is every two years or 36,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. And obviously your servicing costs and your running costs with the EV is going to be a little bit cheaper. But being cheap and good value for money is not one of the Ducato's forties. Now, competition for the e Ducati is certainly going to come from within the Stellantis group with Peugeot's e Boxer, Citroen's e Rally, and Vauxhall's Movano e. But to be honest with you, they're all going to be pretty much of a muchness when it comes to how they are and how they feel, because they are all technically the same van. But of course, there's Mercedes-Benz e Sprinter, a van we drove the other week, and we really do rate. There's the Maxxis e Deliver 9, and of course, the LDV EV80 to consider as well, which offer great value for money and a decent enough range as well. But again, as always, the big competition is going to come from the biggest player of all in the market, the 4D Transit. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the Fiat e Ducato. We like it's decent styling, the carrying capacity and load bay area, the vast array of configurations available, and the option of battery sizes and decent range. We don't like it's poor to drive. 
Its interior feels cheap and out of date. It's not particularly comfortable and it can get very expensive. I've always had something of a bit of a soft spot for Fiat. You see, I started selling them over 30 years ago at the start of my motor trade career. And I've owned quite a few of them myself. And I've always found something positive to say about them. I've always looked on the kind of bright side and defended the brand. But even I'm struggling with this one. This Ducato just simply isn't good enough. It's not particularly nice to drive. It's uncomfortable. The interior is woeful. The charging of it is just silly. It's not even particularly efficient. And I'd understand all of that if it offered good value for money package but it doesn't, it's expensive. And I get that it's available in lots of different configurations, but if you don't need those, if what you're looking for, if this is all the van you'd ever need, then trust me, I would sacrifice a few miles of range to get something that's a lot better to drive and a lot nicer to live with, such as the Mercedes-Benz E Sprinter. The only way I can finish on some kind of positive note with this review is that Hopefully, Fiat will see sense and bring the new 8th generation Ducato out with electric power. The sooner the better, because this one just simply isn't good enough. Thank you for watching Auto EV. As always, please remember to give the video a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you press the little bell button down below, that means you'll be notified when our next video goes live. Remember, we're on all social media as well, so Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter, so pop over there and give us a follow. And if you're going to stick around on our YouTube channel, there's plenty to see, not just van reviews, but also all the latest car reviews, as well as our electric icons series. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching. I'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.